PC building can be portrayed as this glorious art, a fun process of assembling your chosen parts and crafting a build that you love and getting great satisfaction out of it, and sometimes it can be, but sometimes it honestly just sucks. This video has no real point, if I'm honest, just a peek into a day of botched computer maintenance and what can go wrong in an otherwise simple project, and a good way to vent and get some ROI on all the footage that I captured for mostly no reason now. First, let's pay some bills. Plex is the media streaming app that beautifully organizes your media collections and lets you securely access them on all your screens, now with live TV viewing and DVR. Click the link in the video description to learn more. So I managed to waste an entire workday doing what should have been a fairly simple CPU cooler swap in my main workstation. I've been running a new build for about 9 months or almost an entire year now that I've not really talked about on camera much. It's an X299 build running the Intel Core i9-7980XE 18 core 36 thread CPU, graciously provided by Intel. It's great, but as many of you might know by now, this thing runs hot. I currently have it sitting around 3.6 to 3.89 GHz on an all-core overclock to balance out the weird Turbo Boost 3.0 behavior, but that means that some cores can hit 85 Celsius under full tilt load. I could push it up to 4.7 GHz or so, but then it'd be in the 90s and overheat during some work and etc. For the YouTubers who aren't using this in their main rig or have the funds to easily replace it if they screw it up, their solution has been to delid the CPU or take off the integrated heat spreader and remove the bad thermal compound underneath on the CPU die itself and then either put better co thermal compound or use liquid metal and that has been proven to be very effective at lowering processor temps. But I'm not one of those people. This is my primary workstation, and it would be very problematic to be without it for any significant amount of time, and I can't easily buy a new $2,000 CPU. So I started looking into coolers. I'm currently using an unbranded 240mm AIO liquid cooler from CyberPower that came on the CPU when I got it from Intel. It has four 120mm Corsair HD RGB fans and push-pull configuration. With that, the rig idles around 39 to 43 Celsius, and that's with the overclock applied, and under 100% full tilt load, it holds between 75C and 85C max. It's hot, but not problematically so. But I thought I could improve it. I did my research, I looked into cooler performance on the 7980XE, looked at the documentation for my case, the Fantex Enthu Pro M, the first time I've built in a mid-tower sized case, and it says it can support a 280mm radiator without removing the optical drive. I saw nothing about where it needed to go, eyeballing just made me think I could squeeze it in the front of the case like my current radiator and I was good to go. I looked into Gamers Nexus's top coolers for 2017 and the EVGA CLC 280 was it. I ordered it and got to work the next morning. Boy, was that a mistake. It took me a long time to undo the push full fans and Corsair's horrendous RGB scheme. Two wires for every fan all tightly wrapped up and tied up in my case. This is why I usually don't waste time on cable management most of the time, despite complaints from viewers. It is never worth it. I am always changing things and always swapping things out, and the more tidy you make cables, the more hellish life becomes when it's time to undo them. I actually wound up cutting my finger open trying to pull out the RGB plugs from the Corsair RGB controller. I swore I'd never use that again, but spoiler alert, I do. I just sliced my fucking finger open so bad because of these stupid piece of crap Corsair fan RGB controllers. They don't come out of the thing. So I had to use freaking needle nose plowers to yank them out and it just drug like a massive line straight through my skin. I am never using this again. Ever. Unless I have to. Never willingly. Like it's staying in here for the fans that are left, but I am finding other RGB fan solutions. So a good hour or two of dismantling my previous cooler and planning how I'm going to tackle the cable management, I cleaned off the thermal compound off the CPU and cooler and getting alcohol in my brand new cut. That was, that was, that was lovely. And then it was time to install my brand new EVGA CLC 280. Should be great, right? The fans are a little ugly, but it has an RGB badge on the cooler to make up for the less light from the front, so let's do this. Turns out it's helpful if you at least look at the product near your build before spending hours preparing to install it. The CLC280 does not fit in the front of my case at all without removing the optical drive. 
while doing specific measurements would have told me this prior to even ordering it. Since the case manual specified when the optical drive needed to be removed, I assumed it would specify if something could only fit in the top. It did that at certain times. I was pissed, but I proceeded to pull out my top cooler tray, remove the 140mm Corsair RGB fan from there, and install the cooler. Turns out that this EVGA cooler is just beefy for its size, as it doesn't actually fit there either. I had to push the Blu-ray drive out quite a bit in order to fit this thing, but I was committed at this point. It's a workstation, it doesn't need to be pretty, right? I got everything wrapped up, shot some more B-roll of this monster of a cooler with both fans plugged into the pump itself. That, that was weird, and then the USB 2.0 plug that I didn't realize my motherboard didn't have a header for ran to the outside of my case, and I took it back downstairs. Time to see the amazing results, right? Yeah, no. It ran a little hotter at idle, and actually started kicking up to 5 or so degrees hotter on average per core under load, and it was incredibly loud while cooling. All this work to make my build uglier and louder? What the hell? Part of the problem was the positioning of my PC. I have it on a wood stand on the ground below my desk. This is important to keep the sound blocked as much as possible away from my desktop microphone. This also means that there's a little bubble of hot air under the desk. When the cooler was in the front, I had no problem. You could feel the front fans pulling in cold air low to the ground and the exhaust shooting hot air out the other end. My fiance actually likes this as a foot warmer for <laughs> heating her feet because she gets cold. But when the cooler is at the top of the case, right next to the exhaust fan, it's probably just pulling in hotter air, giving it a much more difficult time. So by this point, I had given up on filming just about anything. I swapped the cooler back, used the rest of my Cryonaut thermal compound, they really don't give you much, and wound up leaving things how they originally were, and had wasted literally an entire workday. I think at this point, other than a future video showing the motherboard that I've switched to, I don't want to have this build on this, I don't want to have to build on this rig anymore. I'm, I'm done opening it up. With my workstations, I'm just a build it just to work kind of guy. This was the first time that I built something flashy for use, for YouTube, used a smaller case, and when all this would have been easier in a Define R6 or something like that that I normally use, and I mostly regretted having built it this way. Oh yeah, and I learned that somehow when I first plugged in the USB 3.0 front panel connector to my brand new expensive motherboard, I bent one of the pins in the header to hell and back, and broke it off trying to fix it during this whole process. Only one of my front panel ports works now. Perfect. Now I can buy a PCIe card with a header, but it's still frustrating, and I've actually gone through two so far that just have not worked somehow, so ugh. So while PC building can be fun and an art, if you're doing it as a hobby, and I still enjoy tinkering with my side rigs, when the primary machine you do your day-to-day -day work is on the line, things aren't always sunshine and rainbows. I'm sure the EVGA CLC280 is fine for most people, and I only returned it because I was so mad about the whole experience. But I just thought I'd share a day in the life of a botched PC maintenance experiment. If you liked the video, you know what to do. I'm Ebils Vox here to make tech easier and more difficult and confusing this time. I'll see you in the next video.